Hey everybody, happy Sunday. It says it's two o'clock, so we're ready to get started. Hi, if you're new, my name's Yvonne. Welcome to the Table Runner of the Month. This is month four. We're going to be working on April, so hopefully that gives you enough time to get it done uh, for you to enjoy during the month of April or to give somebody as a gift. So I love uh, the month of April. It's also my birthday, but we're going to be making uh, butterflies today using paper paste. And so you can use scraps for this project. This is a great project. So if you downloaded the pattern, you can find it at www.jellyrollclub.com. Um, you notice that all of the butterflies were the same, but feel free to make the butterflies any color you want. I give you the tools and then you're the ultimate designer of your finished product. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy today's um, table runner lesson. And I'm going to show you guys for those who are uh, have never done paper piecing before, foundation paper piecing, that's what we're working on this month. So let's go ahead and get started. If you have not hit the thumbs up, please do so. We greatly appreciate that and let me show you what supplies you need to get started today. All right, say hello everybody. Yes, Nicole, you can make the butterflies all different colors. All right, everybody, so say hello to each other in the chat. Tell us uh, where you're from. Welcome, let me show you what supplies you need, okay? All right, so first let me start by telling you that this was my first time actually designing uh, a foundation paper piece. So I've done a ton of foundation paper piece, but this was the very first time that I actually designed it. And so just quickly, so I can walk you through the process, I found a photograph of a natural butterfly. And then what I did is I digitally traced all of the lines and I used software to create uh, the templates that you need to download. So this month you have um, actually two handouts. You have one that has um, a lot of supplemental materials and then you have a separate handout that looks like this which is all of your foundation paper piecing and it's two pages. So uh, page one is like this and it says F right here in this one it says F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. It goes through all the colors and then the second page has like D1, D2, it has the D's labeled on there. And so what I did is I added a lot of information in here that you're going to want to make note of. So this is like wing fabric and so I labeled everything and I'm going to go through that. So that's the first thing you need. Um, if you are printing these for the first time, print them at 100% or actual size. Um, this is eight and a half by 11. So that's what we have here. Hello, everybody. So that's the first thing that you're gonna need for this project. The other thing that you're gonna need is a variety of scraps. Um, most of the scraps that I have here are one and a half inches, uh, two and a half inches. Most of these are jelly roll strips. I have a few four inch pieces, um, but I'm gonna be using lots and lots of jelly roll strips for my background. I have a big stack of jelly roll strips and I also have some four and a half inch strips by width of fabric, but you don't need this much. Um, if you wanna know the exact amount of fabric you need for every piece that goes into the butterfly, there is a page in your handout that tells you the exact size. So if you look at this, this has a number so for example, this right here is five. So if you go on here for number five, it says you're gonna need a, a minimum of two inches square. So a two inch square and it says um, how much you're gonna need of that. So for piece number five, that's what you need. This one over here is for example, piece number one. It says that you need a four inch square for piece number one, but sometimes you can get away with smaller pieces and I'll show you um, how that works, okay? So uh, this is uh, was a request. You guys requested something different other than applique, something different other than just regular traditional piecing. So for some of you guys, this is brand new stuff. 
Another page that I made for you guys is this one here, and this is your layout and kind of piecing uh, guide so that you can use this as a reference sheet. This big line you see here is the axis where you join both halves. So we're not gonna join the halves like this, that we're gonna join them along this axis because half of a butterfly actually ends up looking like this. And this is mirror image, so when you sew this, you're gonna be sewing on the lines, on the paper lines, and then when you finish it, it's gonna end up looking like this, and that's what one half of the, the butterfly looks like. The butterfly finishes eight inches by eight inches, and um, let me talk to you about paper piecing. So if you have never paper pieced before, you take your template that I handed, that, that I gave you, the one with all of the pieces, and you have to cut them out. Now you're gonna notice that there's dashed lines on there. You're gonna want to make sure that you can still see the dashed lines after you cut them out. Do not cut those off because that's the outside border of each of your pieces. So when you cut these, let me just show you really quickly. Do not use your good fabric scissors, use your um, cheaper scissors. You're gonna just make sure that you're cutting all of these pieces. You can even leave a tiny bit if you want, just outside of that line. That is not a stitching line. That is the outside of your templates. And so you can just cut them out like this so that you can still see that and you're gonna do that to all of your pieces like that. These solid lines are your stitching lines and then these outer solid lines are how you join the pieces together. So that's what these, these lines represent on here. Does anybody have any questions? How many of you have uh, paper pieced before? You can drop that in the chat if you've paper pieced before, or if you haven't, just let me know what your experience level is with paper piecing. All right, so you have this to look at. This is your visual guide that I created for you. In this visual guide, it shows you the order in which these pieces are sewn together. So we know that this big orange line right here is the axis, right, that joins the two halves together. But this we sew in this order. So we're gonna build pieces A right here. And we're gonna sew it to piece C. So we're gonna sew A1 to A2 like this in this order. You always follow the numerical order. And then we're gonna sew uh, C2, this should, let me see on here. That's mislabeled. It should be C1 and C2. So on your actual piece, this is C2, this is C1. So this should be a one. I apologize for that. And so you're gonna join these two together and then when these pieces are done, we're gonna put them together to make this giant triangle. This entire triangle, if you follow this, right, A to C, then you're gonna sew A to C to this big piece over here, which is B. So once you get that unit, that big triangle sewn, then you're gonna sew it to B. This one right here. So this entire unit gets stitched to this piece. And then the last part that we do to do a half of a butterfly is to sew this top half, uh, once it's finished, down here to B. So we're gonna go in this order. We're gonna go sew A to C. We're gonna sew both of these to B, so A goes sewn to B, and then D gets attached. And once you make that half, you should have a half that looks like this, because we're sewing on this side. So once you sew it like this, this is the, the piece that you have. And so I'm gonna to talk to you about some just tips and pointers, how to make life easier for yourself, and how to understand it, because you're going upside down. All right, so let's go through this. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay out all my pieces, and if you want to, what I did is I labeled them. So just to make sure that you have everything you're supposed to have, I'm gonna lay my wings out. So this is wing fabric, and these are these two halves. 
This is background fabric. This is C, so it's going to go on the bottom. A goes attached to C, so these are going to be friends and they're going to be together. I have this lower half. I have this upper half, so G goes up here at the top because it goes next to F. Right? And so I just kind of lay them out so that I know which direction everything is going. Right? And then my last piece goes right here. So this is how my butterfly is going to go together. I'm going to sew A and C as a unit. Right? I'm going to sew G and H as a unit. I'm going to create these units and then I'm going to sew these three pieces together and these three pieces together before I join the entire thing on the diagonal. I hope this is making sense. And you do have to kind of wrap your mind around it because it's like literally sewing upside down and backwards. And so your brain is going to play tricks on you. So I'm going to show you um, how to fix that and how to uh, fix something in case you boo boo. Don't panic. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this piece right here. So either A and C. And so if you have enough fabric, um, a piece that's big enough, you don't have to join these two pieces. Do you see where it says background and background? You can actually just do it out of a single piece of fabric. And what I mean by that is instead of piecing it, you can simply take, and this is the right side of the fabric, you're going to flip it over and on the wrong side of the fabric you're going to lay this on top and then if you want to you can piece this out of scraps and that's why I have this little two pieces so if you're piecing it out of scraps you can join those together but if not you can simply just use a single piece of fabric like I'm doing And I'm going to secure that with a safety pin and I'm just going to leave it just like that. And so for this one I have a piece big enough so I don't need to piece it at all. All right, so let's look at the next piece. So the next piece that I want to sew before I join these two halves together, and I'm going to move this out of my way, is I'm going to sew this one to this one. But here are the tools that I'm going to use. Um, if you have a tracing wheel, looks like little spikes, like a little wallpaper one of any kind, and you're used to tracing patterns, this is a pattern tracing wheel. If you have one of those, it is super helpful. But if you don't, you can use a seam ripper. You just have to do it carefully and use the back of the seam ripper. Or you can use a very sharp pencil. You can even use the tip of your scissor. If you have a blunted scissor, see how the scissors blunted? You can also use this because we're going to be lightly scoring these stitch lines. So these are important tools. The next thing, the next tool that I want you to make sure you have on hand in addition to all of this is um, I want you to use either a spoon, and I know that sounds crazy, but I use a spoon because I use that for um, pressing. I call that cold pressing. So I use a spoon. If you don't have a spoon, then you can always use one of these little mini irons. But what I don't want to use is a giant iron right now because this is printed on a laser printer and the heat from the iron can make all of these lines disappear. So you don't want to get um, iron happy with this uh, particular project. All right, so let's try to wrap our minds around all of that. So in addition to your scraps, you need all of this, and now we're ready to go. So I, I let you use everyday tools so that, you don't, um, so that you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff. Freezing, cheap, all these things do this, the same thing. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do, and uh, I'm using my wool mat, and this is great for this. Um, one thing that's also handy is like a little tiny... Uh, rotary cutting mat. I bought this one at the Dollar Tree and I love it for this purpose. And I'll show you why. All right, the first thing that I'm going to do is um, you see where my line is? So my line stops inside here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up and I'm going to make a little line with my pencil just lightly, score it. 
because I want to be able to sew from this side all the way through to this side. And you don't do that on all of your pieces, but you do it on this particular piece. Then I'm gonna take my tracing wheel and I'm gonna score right along this little tiny ruler I've got. And I'm not breaking that, I'm just making it so that it's flexible and I can bend it, just like that. Um, I don't have a specific type of paper you should be using. This is literally uh, cheap copy paper. So this is literally from just the, just basic, it's called, uh, what is it? Oh, it's called Economy Copy Paper. And it's from Walmart, I just bought it there. So now that I have this, I'm gonna be able to start by layering my fabric. According to most paper piecing patterns, I have to sew C1 to C2, but how am I gonna do that? So the first thing that you need is you need pieces that are big enough to lay on there, and let me show you what I mean by that. So I took a piece, and I've already kind of put this together to save us, ourselves some time, and I need to kind of visualize where these pieces are laying, right? So these is wrong side to the back side of my paper, wrong side to the back side of my paper. And then I'm going to make sure by folding it back that this is going to fit all the way across because I'm gonna stitch from one side to the other. So that means I'm gonna to have to have sufficient uh, fabric there. And I'm just gonna lay it, lay those seams together and then I'm gonna visualize by folding this back of how this is gonna work. And so this should lay like this because I want this piece, right? to lay that way, if you notice, right? When this is finished, and remember, you're kind of visualizing crazy, this is gonna lay like this, because the finished piece needs to look like this. And so you're sewing upside down and backwards, right? So you're just kind of visualizing, make sure that you have enough laying all the way over. And I'm gonna take this over to the machine, and I'm gonna sew from one side to the other. So I'm gonna wanna pin this, and pins are your friend for this, process. I'm going to make sure that I'm pinning through all the fabric. And so this is right side down, wrong side up. The, the printed lines facing you because you're going to be sewing on these lines, right? And then this is right sides together. So if you notice, these are right side to right side. So pretty side to pretty side, and we're going to be sewing on the wrong side. Okay, now this one is not marked. And so if you want to, you can mark on this one. I just kind of remind myself that this is an outer piece. So I'm gonna need a seam all the way across. And so I'm gonna sew from here all the way down and then I'm gonna trim this up and get it ready, okay? And if you have tips to share for other people, please put those in the comments. It's so helpful to have people in this group because our uh, value is in our group members. So if you guys have suggestions for other people or helpful tips, you can go ahead and drop those in the chat. That's always awesome. I appreciate that so much. Don't worry if you're late, you can always watch the replay. Okay, so let's go over to the sewing machine. So just so you guys notice, I'm sewing, it should be C1 and C2. And so I'm gonna come in I'm using thread that's a different color. It's a baby blue just so that you can see it, make it easier. And I'm gonna start just off the edge of that paper and I'm gonna sew directly on this line right here. I'm not gonna back stitch, but I am gonna use a very short stitch length of 1.75. And just keep your, your sewing slow. Do not rush through this. It's, it's not a race and this is not something that you can do really fast. Okay. So let me show you what I've got now. So now that I've got this cacophony of stuff and I stitched it with blue and gray just so that you can see it. You're gonna to wanna to stitch with something that matches your fabric better. But you see how that stitch line goes all the way down? 
Now I'm ready to trim that. So I'm going to remove this pin and I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to make sure that this white completely covers this piece. And I know this feels kind of crazy, but don't panic. It makes sense in a minute. I'm going to peel back this piece that I folded and this is my seam allowance. So I don't like big sloppy seam allowances and so I trim mine. I use just a little ruler. You can um, use any, any ruler that has a quarter inch seam. I like this thing because it's literally an inch ruler and these are all one quarter inch markings. And it's just a, it's like a one inch by five and a half inch or six inch. And so there's my quarter inch seam. And then I'm going to finger press this. This is where this spoon comes in handy, right? Just make sure that you've covered it sufficiently. And I'm going to come and I can um, press this with a spoon. And a spoon is great for this. Try not to stretch it too much, but you're just going to flatten it out. If you have one of those little baby irons like I do, you can always hit that seam just carefully with the little baby iron just like this, just to make it flat, as flat as you can get it. So you can either hit it with a spoon or you can hit it with a baby iron. But either way, I want to make sure that all of these pieces hang out and pass uh, the outer edges of this block. And now I'm just going to lay my little ruler on here and I'm going to trim it all the way around. And when I first started doing paper piecing, I thought, what an incredible waste of fabric. But this piece can be used for the other, the other body part of the, the butterfly. So you're actually not wasting it. And so I'm just going to take, can you guys see? I'm trying to look at what I'm doing and stay within the range of the camera. And so I'm just pulling all these little scraps off just making sure that all of my bits stay like this. And so this is the very first piece. So there we have it, right? So I have, and that's okay if it's blunted, it's supposed to be that way. So if you notice, this is blunted. It's not a mistake because this is the part that's on the bottom of the butterfly. So now that we have part number C, we're going to join it to its sister, which is part number A, right? So I'm just going to make sure that I'm using a flat pin and keep that pinned together. And then I'm going to uh, go ahead and make sure that I trim all the way around. This is where this tiny little rotary mat, like I said, you can get these at the Dollar Tree, comes in handy. So I'm just going to lay it right along that edge. If you have smaller scraps you want to use, you can use jelly roll strips for a bunch of these parts. So if you have a ton of little scraps, this is great for that. All right, this is why I love my flat pins because it allows me to do this trimming. And be careful when you're um, doing this because it's so easy to jump your tiny ruler and that's why I use my smaller rotary cutter. Do not attempt this if you have a ginormous rotary cutter because you can really easily jump the ruler and do that. If you feel more comfortable using a wide ruler, you could always use a wide ruler. And I have, you know, something like this. So if you have a wider one that's maybe like four and a half inches like this one, then you can always lay it down and just kind of keep your hand at a safer distance. So. Please, oh please, do not cut your fingers. I did that earlier in the year, and it is no fun. And so this takes time. I'm just trimming that and making sure that it's all accurate. I'm making sure that I'm not chopping off my paper because I need all the bits of that paper. And it has little blunted corners, so go ahead and blunt those. All right. I have my little scrap bin over here because this gets to be really messy. All right, so then this piece and this piece now get sewn together like this, right? You're gonna flip that over and flip that over and I'm gonna join these lines 
from here to here and here to here because we're going to sew them together. But I'm going to use a pin. And so how I do this is I take a pin and I start right here in the corner and I stab it through. And then I come to the other side of here and I'm going to make sure that I stab it right through that corner right there. So I'm going one corner to another because I want to line those up. See that? So my pin goes from this corner to this corner and that allows me to line that up exactly the way that I want. And I can rotate that down if I want to because I'm going to be sewing from this side to this side. I'm going to take this second pin that I had in here and I'm careful to line everything up and I'm going to pin it about in the middle. So I'm going to go from this side. I need to make sure that I'm lined up with that one so when I went through it went through both sides. I'm going to rotate that down. And so now I'm going to take it to my machine and I'm going to sew with the papers on from here all the way down and I'm going to go past that spot. So if you notice, I need to make sure that I'm sewing on my machine all the way through that seam allowance on both sides. So I'm going to sew from here all the way down. So let me go ahead and sew that and show you what these two pieces look like when they're put together. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, you can use an add a quarter ruler, but I already had this little guy from a long time ago. Um, you can use any ruler that has a quarter inch seam like this. Uh, this one has a frosted edge that marks the quarter inch seam. Most of your creative grid rulers have a quarter inch seam on one side and a half inch seam on the other and these are helpful if you don't want to buy an extra ruler. All right, so let me go ahead and sew this together. And so now I'm joining the bottom part of the butterfly. And for this one, I'm going to start sewing right here at the top go all here and sew all the way off. But I'm gonna remove my pins as I go. I don't wanna sew through my pins, okay? There's a lot of tools out there like the add a quarter ruler and if you have it, please use it. It, it can make things easier. I don't uh, need it because I've done this so many times, I just use my regular ruler. Okay. We sew all the way through, leaving the paper in. Careful not to shift or move your layers. And I love paper piecing just because of how accurate it is. And uh, it's super, super accurate. If you have trouble with things like flying geese or um, sharp points, on your blocks and you can find a paper piece template, uh, these are the way to go. And so now when I have it and I open it, that's the correct piece I have. All right, so like I said, now we have this spoon. If you wanna make yourself um, life a little bit easier, you can use this little tracing wheel and score this paper. I like to just kind of score that because it makes it easier to let the block lay flat. See how easy that is? You can use your spoon at this point to just kind of smooth it and make it flat. Translucent foundation paper works like a dream. Awesome. So if you have tips out there, put them out there. I uh, tend to spend less money on extra tools just because um, I want to save my money for fabric. <laughs> so I buy less tools. Okay, so there we have it. See how nice and sharp the bottom of that butterfly tail came out? So this is the bottom of the butterfly now. And so see how nice and sharp that corner is? Look at that. This is what I love about paper piecing is, is these corners come out so darn sharp. And we do not remove any of the paper until we are done. Okay, 
Now for the next part. So the next part I'm going to be working on is section B. And for those of you who want to know what section B is, section B is this part, which is the lower part of this right here, this section, right? So this is A and C, and then you work on B. In this case, I've already put together B, but I'm going to show you how I did it. And look right here. So sometimes when you're paper piecing and you forget to get a piece that's big enough, which I did, guess what I did? I just came back and I added another little sliver and it doesn't matter. So if you boo-boo this up, it's, it's not too bad. You can always go back and recover. So then this is the other part of my butterfly, right? So don't panic if you boo-boo this up. All right, so how did I do this next part? So the next part so that you have is B, right? So B is on this side. And then you have its mirror image, which is E. And these are uh, built pretty much the same. So let me show you how I did this one. I started with E1, right, or B1. It's going to be the same. And I scored a line, if you noticed, right? Because I am, and I drew a line on there with a pencil to kind of help me guide. And see where my thread is? I started stitching here, and I stitched all the way across. And just to make sure that you have enough, you're going to lay the wrong side up, the right side down. You're going to make sure that you have plenty of fabric all the way around. And I kind of folded it back. I trimmed it so that it had a quarter of an inch on this side because I don't like working with messy tails. I made sure that I had enough. And then I laid these right sides together like this. I made sure that my piece was big enough to overlap all the way out. I used a two inch square and then I stitched on this side from this point right here and I stitched over. So I stitched between one and two. The next piece I need to sew is this background and it needs to get sewn between three and two. So two and three. So you go in order E1 to E2 E2 to E3, E3 to E4. So you follow the numbers all the way around. So for this side, did the same thing. Once I, I laid all my pieces out, I just used my ruler. I'm going to get out my tracing wheel and I'm going to do the same thing. And tracing wheels come in different um, types. There's this one that you can use to trace patterns, but there's ones that are more spiky. And I have, I have keep this one like this, so this one is even spikier, see it? So this is my other tracing wheel. But you can use either one, and then I just lay it right along that edge, and I perforate, because A, it makes it easier for me to follow the pattern, and B, it makes it easier to fold the paper back, and when I get ready to pull this paper off, it's already perforated, so it makes it really easy to rip this paper off at the end. All right. So I have E3, I'm going to peel that back and I need to make sure that I have a piece that covers all of this. So I'm just going to lay a piece down, right? This is the right side, I'm going to lay it down and then I'm just going to kind of visualize it. When I lay it down, does it cover most of it? Yes. And so I'm just going to make sure that I have a good overlap on both sides. And I'm going to lay this down like this. Sometimes I pin it too. Just give it a little pin like this into my um, wool mat, which is why I like using my wool mat. And I can see right through my wool mat. And then I just make sure that I'm cutting outside. So if you notice what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting and leaving sufficient fabric all the way around. So I'm just going to cut like this. And I can see right through this fabric. And then I'm going to look on the other side. I'm lining that up since I had already trimmed it to make sure that I'm going to have enough to go past this seam. So I'm making sure that I go about a half inch past the seam and about a half inch past the seam. So now I'm ready to sew this piece together. Just going to pin it just to hold it out of the way. I check it one more time. Always double check yourself to make sure your piece is big enough. And that should 
go all the way past the paper and that's what I want to do. And this butterfly is going to be super cute. I have a feeling you're going to like it when you see it. All right, so now I'm going to sew. Let me flip my camera view. I'm going to sew from this point here all the way down to the outside and I'm going to sew off of the paper. So I'm going to come over here, make sure everything's lined up, nothing got skewed. And I use um, a leader and ender just to kind of hold my thread. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to drop that presser foot right there. And I'm going to drop that needle right where these two lines meet. Like I said, use a tiny stitch length and sew right on the line. and then just keep sewing. Don't stop. You don't need to. Trim all these excess threads because they get on my last nerve. And then pull that off and it's ready. So I stitched from this piece right here, from this intersection, all the way down and past the outside seam line. So I'm always sewing past the outside seam line. All right, I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna take that pin out. And like I said, a spoon, super handy for this. You can use your fingernails if you want, like this. Or you can use a spoon and run it along that seam line. See how it sticks all the way beyond? You can give it a tiny little press, like I said, very lightly. You have one of these tiny irons. This fabric is not starched because um, I find that if you overly starch your fabrics for this process, it can be in a little bit inaccurate. Yes, that is correct. This right here should be C1 and C2 and I apologize for that. It is correct on this template you see it right there? It says C1, C2. It's correct on here. It just, uh, I wasn't paying attention when I was labeling that. Okay, so now that I have this, I can go ahead and I can use my little rotary cutter or I can just trim it. Just kind of rough trim it. And then I can come back and accurate trim it. So I can save all of these. These are good for something else. All right. Like I said, if you can go to the Dollar Tree and get a hold of one of these little mats from the Dollar Tree, they're super handy for all this stuff. And if you're afraid to get your hand too close, use a bigger ruler. Just make sure you're not chopping off the paper. Like that. I've got it nice and flat on this side. And now I'm gonna flatten it on the other side. Does anybody have any questions so far? Any awesome tips you wanna share? Let me stop and look. And we clarify the C1 and C, C2 issue, right? All right, so now that I, I stitched E1 and E2, and I stitched E3, so this is E3, right, onto E2, and if you notice, my seam allowance is pretty small. Right, now I'm gonna stitch my last piece, which is E4. And so this is my last piece. I'm gonna lay that on here. I'm gonna give it a little perforation and I wanna sew from seam allowance to seam allowance. And I'm just gonna give it a little perforation with my little wheel. And that's just to help me fold it back easier. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim that quarter inch seam allowance. Just because it helps me to line up my fabric if I go ahead and, and do that quarter inch seam allowance. I lay it on there, right on the edge of that paper is that quarter inch seam allowance, and I trim it off. 
Then when I fold it back, I know that I can line up my fabric right on there. This piece right here, will that work? It might, but I'm not gonna take any chances and I'm just gonna use a slightly bigger piece. When you paper piece, always opt for a larger rather than a smaller piece. That's okay. And if I put that on there, you're just kind of visualizing what that's gonna look like. Make sure that your piece is big enough. So that piece is definitely big enough because it's gonna stick out a half inch on either side. And when I flip it over, it's gonna more than cover that corner, okay? So that means I'm gonna lay that on there, right sides together, pretty side to pretty side. I'm gonna make sure that that piece extends all the way out on these two sides and that when I fold it back, it's gonna extend past the corner. And so now I'm gonna sew on this side and I'm gonna make sure that I extend past both of those seam allowances. So I'm gonna sew from this corner all the way over to this corner. Am I making sense? You're gonna sew through that seam allowance. So ready down, I'm going to put a pin through it, the whole thing, just to keep it together. You could put a pin on either side, the front or the back, whichever way is not going to scratch the bed of your machine. And you're just going to take it over there and I'm going to sew from this side all the way to this side. And I'm going to repeat this over and over again for all of the pieces. I'm just gonna sew one to two, two to three, three to four, and so on and so forth for every one of these bits. All right, how are we doing so far? I'm trying to make this friendly for newbies who've never done it. All right, so you notice that, same thing. I'm just gonna flip it over. I'm gonna to try to get that as flat as I can without distorting. And this is where the paper comes into play. The paper keeps it nice and flat. Like I said, some people just take their fingernails and do it that way. But as you can see, that sticks way beyond. And, and when you're starting out, you're better off being generous. Okay? And so same thing, you're just gonna flip it over to the other side and you're gonna take and make sure that you're not trimming off of your paper. I'm just gonna cut it. If you have one of those little rotating mats, it can be super helpful for this, but it's not necessary. You can rotate this little guy around. And I'm just gonna take that little nip of that corner because those blunted corners help you line stuff up. And just save those. And so now we have that part of the butterfly. So I have this part of the butterfly. I have the middle section of the butterfly and we're moving our way all the way around the butterfly. So now I have the two halves, right? And I have the lower body of the butterfly. And now some people would say, this is the lower half, this is the top half. Why not join it this way? And the reason that we don't join it this way is because we would end up with six seams that we have to swirl right here. And so this is why your butterfly is joined on a diagonal. So we make the bottom half, but this is how you join your butterfly. And the reason you do that is because that only gives you uh, four quadrants rather than six in the middle so that it's not a big lump of fabric. Does that make sense? All right, so we've built the bottom. Now we need to build the top. And this one has a few more pieces. So let's build the top of this butterfly, right? So like I said, if you wanna remember, you just lay your pieces like this and you have to remember which direction they go and it's actually not too painful. So I've got these ready for my other butterflies, All right? So that's what they look like, then you trim them up. So this is H, right? H goes at the top, if you remembered the top of our butterfly 
has H1 and H2. So this is H1 and H2. And this is actually going to end up going this way. We have to join this head of the butterfly to part G. And part G is just going to be made out of a solid piece if you don't want to join it as a partial. So same thing we did before. Let me move these things out of your way. And I'm simply going to take it, I'm going to trim that little head. I'm going to trim that G piece so that it fits that H piece. Don't use pins that have heads on them for this project. It makes it a pain. If you can find flat head pins, that's the ideal because then you can lay your ruler on top and trim them. And like I said, if you don't have a tiny ruler or you feel unsafe cutting something that small, just use a much bigger ruler like this one and it still works. Just hold your hand away from that area so that you're not injuring yourself. You can just move the mat instead of moving the piece, move the mat. I do that all the time. So rather than move that piece around and run the risk of distorting it, then I just move this around. Like I said, you don't have to spend a bunch of money to do this. Inexpensive copy paper will do, a bag of scraps that you have floating around, and just use your regular ruler. Don't panic about buying a bunch of special tools. I'm the queen of making do with what I've got. I was raised with a whole bunch of brothers and sisters, and so I just learned to make do. Uh, do I glue based instead of using pins? Not with this because I don't want to accidentally glue my paper. You could do it, but I, I don't want to accidentally get glue on my paper and then have to make my things wet. So I do glue based. That's one of my favorite methods of basting, but just not for this particular process. All right, so I have H, right, that I need to trim. And then I have G, and we're going to be sewing G and H together just like this. All right? So these two pieces. So that was a great question, Sue. I do like glue basting, but not for this. Not for this process. Do you guys do that in your sewing room? You have like two or three tools, and you just kind of use whatever you see in front of you? It's whatever's handy, right, friends? Like I said, roll it around. Um, I'm going to be doing an entire series probably next year with a lot of extra foundation piece patterns. So now that I've got the hang of this software, I just need to remember to label my pieces. I think I'm going to create a lot more of these. All right, H1 goes to G1 and G2. So just like we did before, I line these up, right? Take my pin. I want to be sewing from this side down, so I'm going to take my pin down here at the end, poke it through. Make sure that I'm lining this up with the correct side, right? You just have to keep visualizing this because it can be a, it can be, take some getting used to. And then I poke that pin right at that intersection. So right at that intersection right there, I'm joining these two pieces from that corner to that corner. Does that make sense? Yeah, just... When, you have, when you're doing this, I'm like, I have a pile of tools over here beside me, and I just grab the first one that I get my hands on, and I just keep working. And I hope that I don't lose it in my pile, right? So there it is. Like I said, you, you could glue base the fabric, but then I don't want to accidentally get glue on the, on the paper, and then that's a nightmare to, to clean up. And so there I have it. I've lined up those seam lines. And I've got two pins on the bottom, and I'm going to sew from here to here. And so this butterfly is starting to come together, right? So these are the two lower wings. 
and this is the top half we're now working on, okay? And so just so you can see where I'm at, like I said, this will make an eight inch butterfly. Or it should anyway, if I printed these pieces correctly, right? And guess what? If you print the pieces a little too big or a little too small, it doesn't matter um, as long as both sheets end up the same size because these pieces should match and you can test them. So if your pieces all match, then it means you printed them correctly. All right, so this one, I'm gonna start and I'm gonna start in the seam allowance, go all the way down and go off the other seam allowance. Okay. Always sewing on the line. So what can happen if you don't pin these, because pinning is necessary for this, is you can get your lines off kilter. And I tried pinning, and I tried doing it without pins. Right, so now you see these. I can score this a little bit if I want to with this tool right here just to make it easier. I'm going to go right along the edge of that seam line and this just kind of scores that for me. And this is why I love my mat. And so look, it makes it so easy to bend over now. Same with this one. I can just kind of perforate that along there and it makes that seam just more flexible so I can flip it whichever direction I need. And that's why I like it. Some people um, like to fillet their seams open. I'm a seams to the side kind of a gal, but if you really wanted to, you could open your seams as well. But mine are just designed to go to one side, and so I leave it like that. Same thing, take a spoon, just run it down, and see where my piece didn't quite go all the way there, right? And that's fine because it just got a hair off off center so what happens if you don't pin right well on this side I was doing a great job I went along and I was stitching la 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 it looked beautiful but then I opened it and I noticed that it was off by just a tiny hair and when I flipped it over I noticed that my stitching was not on that line and so I noticed that when I do not pin these pieces these parts do not match. And this is just like a partial test block I was working on. So pinning is essential. Which side of the paper does the right side of the fabric go on? I'm getting ready to show that again, BJ, so you can see it. So the wrong side of the fabric goes on the back of your pattern, right? So this is the wrong side of the fabric. So fabric goes upside down. So now I've done the top half. So I've done these two halves, I've done this bottom, and now we need to do wing tops, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys once again, and this just takes a lot of kind of wrapping your brain around all of this because it can be kind of mind blowing. So we need sections D, right, which goes up here at the top, and then I need section F. So I'm gonna grab an F. I need sections D and sections F. For this butterfly, I'm gonna make the top of it green because this green has some purple in it. So I'm gonna make this butterfly green and purple because I didn't have enough pieces to make an all purple butterfly. So don't be afraid to experiment, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this fabric, right? And this is gonna end up like this because we're sewing on we're sewing on this side, so our fabric's gonna go on this side, and it's kind of weird to visualize it, but let's look at the first one. So let's just look at D, right? The first piece that we're gonna lay on there is D1. You see D1? So that means that I'm gonna lay my fabric wrong side up underneath D1 because I wanna make sure that I'm getting a full coverage. So this piece is gonna extend all the way out it's gonna extend on either side, and then I'm going to just go ahead and pin that in place, right? The next piece that I'm gonna sew 
is this little guy down here, which is D2. So I'm going to sew from here all the way through the seam allowance. And so let me just show you again. I'm putting the pretty side of the fabric down. I'm putting the printed template up. So this is wrong side to wrong side, right? And then I just check it to make sure that this has sufficient fabric to go all the way past my thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and just score the next line. So if you notice D1 to D2, I'm gonna make sure that I am sewing between these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just perforate that line right there because it allows me to fold it back. So I just need a piece of fabric that's going to um, cover this piece right here. So I need to make sure that I'm covering D2 because this is what gives that butterfly that, uh, that arch. This fabric out here where it says outer wing is all from a contrasting color. So if I wanted to find another purple, this all of this area here, and let me just use a purple colored pencil. Let me see if I have a purple. That's eh, a blue. Yeah, it's a blue. This is all going to be the same fabric. And sometimes I do that with my paper piece templates. I just kind of used color pencils to kind of remind me of what color is going to go there. And that's just kind of visually helpful for me, right? And so this is all going to be that contrast color for the wing. This is background, 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 background. This is wing fabric. So whatever other color I'm going to be using is going to go like this. So if you want to, you can use colored pencils and just kind of lightly mark your pieces and give yourself something to follow so that when you get ready to attach your pieces, you don't get confused. Um, Rosina, the full page for the to print out the butterfly, there's two links in the pattern. There's one for the butterfly and there's one for the template. So there's three links on the page. If you go to the chat at the very top, there's the link. And here, let me drop it really quick just in case you can't find it. So let me stop for a second and do that, okay? So if you cannot find the pattern template, I'm gonna drop it in the chat now. And if you're um, needing the actual uh, foundation piece, the paper foundation piece, let me drop that in the chat now. And so these are the two links that you need. So if you're looking for them, that way you don't have to chase them around. Yes, most definitely shorten your stitch length, score your paper, just makes your life easier. Like I said, using colored pencil helps remind you what colors because it's so easy because you're working from the wrong side to get confused. So I score my paper, I flip that over, I make sure I trim. And like I said, I lay this down so that it's a fourth of an inch. See that fourth of an inch line is right there. And I'm just gonna trim that off. And the reason I do this, I take this extra step, is because I wanna make sure that I'm lining up that next piece and that I know which direction it's gonna go. So I'm gonna do this little piece right here, right? This little, this little wing piece. So I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna use a little bit of a purple accent. Now I do have some jelly roll strips that match the bottom. So I'm probably gonna add this strip. This is the bottom of the, the butterfly. I'm gonna add this to the top. So I think I'm gonna use that as a contrast. And so I just need to make sure that I have sufficient fabric to line that, that I have sufficient fabric for this piece to line up this way, and that I have at least a fourth of an inch on the other side of that so it looks like I do. And I'm just gonna take, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off so that I have sufficient fabric. And if you notice, this is right sides together, right? Wrong side. So piece number one is wrong side facing up. 
and I'm going to lay that down like this. Make sure that I have a fourth of an inch, that this goes all the way to the end. I'm going to lay that down, and I'm going to stitch from here to here. Always pinning. I'm going to start on the inside, and I'm going to work my way out through the seam allowance. So I'm sewing this part right here, straight out like that. And that is D2. So I'm always doing D1 first, then sewing D2 onto there, etc. Is this making sense? Can you hand quilt the pieces without a sewing machine? Yes, Barbara. If you wanted to just hand sew these pieces and you don't have a sewing machine, you most certainly could. Absolutely you could. If you are still looking for the pattern, you go to www.jellyrollclub.com and all of the pattern pieces are on there and the handout. So you see two links on there and it shows you where they are. Just the, it says video link and then the other link and there you have all the links together. So there I have it. I remove that pin. I'm going to open those up. Like I said, I can press with a spoon. You can press with your finger. You can press with a mini iron. Just don't use a giant iron because it can all of a sudden get toner ink all over your pieces. So every single time you can print. If you do not want to stitch this little tiny line, you don't have to. Um, the software added that line on there, but I found that actually I didn't really need it when I was playing with this pattern. And so just make sure that you trim off those threads. Start with a fresh, uh, rotary blade not like mine dull rotary blades are the number one source of accidents let me tell you and then i'm just going to trim all of the excess off once i opened that and pressed it open let's save those little bits right so this is what it should look like on one side and then this is what it should look like on the other side now that i did d to d2 right and it says go to d3 now we have to deal with D4. So we're just literally going in order all the way around. I just score my paper right along D4 because that's where I'm going to bend it. And because this is going to be a seam, I'm going to go ahead and trim that along that seam allowance. And so I do so it's a personal preference. Some people do not trim those seam allowances. They just sew it all together and then they trim all the excess off. I like to, to trim as I go because I think it makes for a much neater and much flatter finished piece. And so now that I'm gonna be sewing between here, right, and D4 is the next one, then I can lay the piece that I want on there. So the piece that I'm gonna be sewing is I'm gonna be sewing a purple onto this green and so I just need to make sure that I lay a piece of purple that's big enough to go across that seam and I'm going to flip it over and pin it make sure I line that up nice and neat along that quarter inch seam right there that's already been trimmed and I'm going to flip it over and uh, you can trim that off or you can trim it off later. It's up to you. I find that I actually save more fabric if I just kind of roll it up and clip it and then trim it afterwards. So I wait until I open it so that I'm wasting the least amount of fabric. So you can always just kind of clip it with a little clip. 
to get it out of your way, especially if you're using jelly roll strips. We're gonna sew from this point to this point and we're going to stop. We're not gonna keep sewing all the way through because this has a horizontal seam, so we're sewing from this side to this side. Yeah, the scoring technique is my favorite. All right, so now I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna end here. And so let me show you what that looks like. Use a leader and ender for this. It saves you some thread. It'll save you headaches of having to rethread your machine. And like I said, shorten your stitch length, 1.9. And then I go backwards, just one stitch when I get there. I just wanna make sure that I am stitching all the way through and into that next line by just one stitch. Not a lot, but like one stitch. All right, so you can see on the opposite side and I tried to sew with some thread that you could see. You can see where I'm at. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over by removing this. And then I'm going to see how much of that fabric I'm going to need so that I'm not wasting too much of my fabric. You can hold it up to the light if you want to. This is very helpful to do. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if you can't quite see, if you have one of these gooseneck lamps, here, let me turn mine. So if you have one of these gooseneck lamps and you can't quite see through your paper, you're using copy paper, you can hold it up to the light like this and it makes it super easy for you to see your pieces. So you just lay it on a lamp. This one's like one of those inexpensive LED lamps. And so I lay it on there and I can see where my excess is. And so I know that that's where it needs to go so I can trim it. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to give it a trim. All right, and make sure that I have sufficient in there. And so if you have one of these little LED lamps, they're super handy. I just keep mine over here all the time. Yeah, these, these little uh, tools right here, the, the little scoring tool, is super inexpensive. I think I paid like $4 for mine and they're super great. Like I said, they have them in different types. They're just like a pattern tracing wheel is what they're called. And they're super easy to use. All right, so I have sufficient now. I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna make it, it's important to flatten it as you go. So I take, this is one of those um, jobs that you can't rush. But if you take and you flatten it as you go, it does make for a really beautiful, finished and accurate final product. And so there I have it. So I've done four, so now I need five. So I'm just gonna take five, and this one will get sewn from this intersection to this intersection. It won't go all the way out into the seam allowance because this is an inner piece. Now this one will, but some of them do and some of them don't. So you just kind of have to pay attention. All right, flip. So the next one is I have to sew between these two pieces. And if I look at my pattern, it looks like I can avoid sewing that piece by flipping this over. So I just kind of check my piece because sometimes a, just a paper piece pattern like mine, the software will give you a bunch of pieces, but sometimes you can cheat and actually sew less pieces on here if your piece is big enough, right? And so in this case, it looks like it is, and I'm gonna be able to save this outer wing shape by just leaving that alone. And so look, I was like, you know what? I have enough to go all the way out. So I'm going to leave well enough alone. Oh well, no, I'm going to go ahead and sew it. Because look, I didn't sew all the way out. And so if I don't sew that down, I'm going to have a little seam without that. So in this case, I can't get away with that. But you can if you want to from time to time. If you know what's going on. 
So I'm going to fold that back and I'm going to go ahead and not be lazy and sew D5 onto there. Oh well, I tried. Your brain starts experimenting. After you sew a lot of these, you're like, well, maybe I can do this and maybe I can do that. And I go ahead and I just trim everything as I go. It just keeps it neat and pretty. It makes it easier to see your pieces and understand what's happening. So I do try to keep my seam allowances kind of clean, right? And I fold it back. And just removing the excess just makes it easier to work and easier to nest your seams. All right. Make sure that I have enough. If not, I can still fix it. No big deal. All right. Yeah, that looks like I did enough. All right, so there I have this one. I'm going to do D5 onto there. So now I need to do what kind of fabric? It'll say outer wing fabric. So I'm doing some more of that purple. I'm just going to lay it on there and make sure I have enough. If you boo-boo it up, you can always print another sheet. Or you can add another little bit of fabric. It's okay. So always keeping right sides together. Pin. And I'm going to sew from side to side. I'm going to sew from here to here, but I'm not going to go into the seam allowances because I have these two pieces that overlap. Is this making sense to everyone? I hope I haven't confused you. I've tried to go step by step and just take my time so that you can see the entire process. If your um, eyes are like mine and you need to wear readers, it, uh, it helps to have your readers because otherwise you're going to miss that little line. All right. All right, and you can see mine extends all the way out, and so now my butterfly wing is getting that shape. I don't know, do you guys like this purple and, and green? I think I like this purple and green. And all my butterflies are gonna end up looking different just because I'm gonna use all these scraps that I have. So I hope that I'm not confusing you and that you're understanding uh, that this is kind of like sewing upside down and a little bit backwards, but in the end, you end up with some really cool pieces. All right, so D9, I just have to make sure that I have a fourth of an inch on the other side of that. And then I'm just gonna kind of fold these. Just have to make sure that I don't have a bunch of floppy things hanging out. Okay, same deal. Press her down. Make sure you're going out to the edge where you need to go out to the edge. And that this is laying flat and then you can just keep adding. And it doesn't take long. This is actually um, less time consuming than most people realize. Last but not least, right, I just did D5. I have to make sure I do D6. So I'm doing D6, oops, I, yeah, D6. So I'm lining that up. And look, I left that seam skimpy, so I'm just gonna have to fudge this just a little bit. It happens in life. And you know what, we don't cry about it. It just happens. I have to make sure that I push that out. Yeah. And so that seam allowance is just going to be skimpy, but I'm not too worried about it. So now I need background. I need a piece that's going to cover this in its entirety. So I need to make sure that I have a big enough piece and make sure that the right side is touching the right side. We're going to go like this. And now I'm going to sew from seam to seam. So I need to make sure that this one hangs out on both sides. And I'm getting ready to sew. All right, so now that I've made a butterfly for you guys using paper piece, what other kind of paper piece 
templates should I put out there? So if you have a particular preference, just let me know in the, in the comments below. I'm thinking of doing some really cool stars, maybe for um, 4th of July for the July one, so I'm not sure. What do you guys think? I think I should do some really cool stars for like a patriotic table runner and make them paper pieced. This is a little bit slower than uh, traditional piecing, but it'll make for some really sharp points. There we go. And as you can see, that extends. The only thing that makes me sad about this process is that sometimes I end up with a bunch of stuff like this that's kind of small, so I'm still trying to figure out what to do with all my confetti. All right. Back to the back. And again, just keep trimming and going all the way around. This won't take us very long. So each of these blocks is going to take you about an hour and a half to do. Just so you can kind of time yourself. And then in order to lay them out like I did in the, um, in the image, you're just going to have to sew a jelly roll strip across the top and down one side. And then if you want to change the position, you can go on the opposite side and across the bottom. And so that's how I'm going to be laying mine out. Okay, so that piece is done, right, which is six. So now we have to do seven. And I'm going to go a little bit faster now. Seven goes all the way out to the seam allowance, but I'm just going to score it really quick. Fold it back already stitched all the way through which is fine if you want to you can peel back the paper from time to time I try not to but if you need to you can peel back the paper to fold it back this is why you don't always fold every seam so I'm just gonna score it all right and I need to do line it up right here to do D so I'm gonna lay this right sides together and I'm gonna sew it's going to give me plenty of space there. I'm going to line those up. I'm going to sew down here, and I'm going to sew from 8 down through the seam allowance, and then start there at 8, go through 7, and go down the seam allowance. I don't want to sew into piece number 8, so I'm sewing from 8 down. Can you see that? I'm starting right at that line. I'm not starting on the outside. I'm starting on the inside. Sometimes you need to go backwards just to stitch. That's fine. And then you just keep going out to the seam. All the way out to the edge if the piece is on the outside. If the piece is on the inside, you go from line to line. So just remember, outside pieces, outside pieces you can sew out. So this is an outside piece, you can sew out to the seam line. If it's an inside piece, you sew from line to line. You don't go all the way out. And this is what's going to give that butterfly wing the shaped curve. A little curvy shape. And just flatten those seams. Like I said, I do not overly starch my fabric for this process because it just makes it really hard to fold all of those seam allowances. All right, we're getting there. Are you guys following along so far? I'm not getting too fast, I'm not getting too far ahead of myself. Don't forget to stop me and, and let me answer any of your questions if you're not sure what I'm doing. You guys are some awesome people. I appreciate you guys giving me suggestions because it really stretches my skills. So not only am I teaching you things, but this is stretching my skills. So learning how to make templates and making them accurate 
was my goal and I think that we're getting there. And see how I have all that excess in there? I'm gonna go ahead and flip this back, flip that back and I'm gonna trim that because it's getting on my last nerve, right? And OCD people, we can't have stuff getting on our last nerve. Anybody else OCD like me? And you're like, I can't have that. It's going to make me crazy. There we go. Now the excess has gone out of there. You can always just trim it with scissors. Like I said, peel that paper back a little bit. And I need that seam allowance to be straight because it's making me crazy that it's crooked. There we go. Anybody else get a little crazy about their seam allowances? There we go. Now I have one last piece to sew, and that's piece nine. So we're gonna, it's already been scored. Let's just double check it. Make sure it's all the way through that paper. Fold it back, that's that seam allowance. I'm gonna add a little bit of background. Let me see if this background will match. When I flip it, will it cover it? That will. So I'm gonna take a risk and I'm gonna put that piece in there. So use your little scraps, don't waste them, right? This is a piece that I cut off. And you just have to double check that it's gonna fit all the way out to the outside of the paper. Once that does, I can line it up. Right, I can't stand a bulky seam and then I get a little bit insane. So please bear with me in my insanity. <laughs> All right, so who, it, who else has a family watching the uh, NCAA basketball tournament? My team lost in the first round, so I have no teams to watch, so I guess paper piecing it is for me. Does anybody watch uh, college basketball? I root for the Wildcats, the Kentucky Wildcats normally, but sadly they're no longer in the tournament. All right. Let's get this last piece done. And it's my last outside piece, so I'm going to go from seam to seam all the way. Use that little leader and ender. Save yourself some thread and some headaches. All right, you see that line? Flip it over, make sure that it goes all the way out and I'm gonna press this last seam. <sighs> yes, I was, you know how you play bobbin chicken with your thread? I was playing fabric chicken with this one because I used a little tiny piece. I was just trying to use a scrap and not another whole piece. And look, just barely over the edge. So I played fabric chicken and won. All right, but what happens if I play fabric chicken and I lose, right? So what happens if I get out here and I don't quite make it all the way to the edge? Guess what, if it's on the outside, you can just add another piece of fabric, sew it down and flip it over and you'll be okay. And look what I did here, ladies. Remember I said don't get in a hurry? I got in a hurry and look, I did not sew a piece to D8. So what am I gonna do now? That one's supposed to have background to cut off. Guess what? It's not a big deal. I'm just gonna sew a piece all the way across. What happens if you do what I did? And you're like, darn it, I got so excited talking about basketball that I missed a whole piece. Well, guess what? I can lay another piece on top. Marge, you're a Badger fan. Look, see my wing? That should be blunted, so guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sew a piece across there, and I'm not gonna cry about it. I'm just gonna make sure that I lay sufficient piece that it's gonna cover that. It's gonna make me sad to do that, but hey, this is live TV. Sometimes we do that. Make sure that I have D8, D7, and D8. See, that's supposed to be chopped off at D8. 
So now I'm going to make sure that I lay my piece right sides together and I'm going to have to sew that across there. So I'm going to go like this and I'm going to sew my wing across there and I'm not going to cry about it because it is what it is, right? Do you see what I did, amigos? So I'm just going to take my spoon and I'm going to recover from my sad moment there. I was mourning my basketball team, and that's what happens. Don't mourn your basketball team while you're sewing. You'll end up sewing it wrong. So now you see, friends, how easy it is to get all discombobulated. Bloop. And that is how it's supposed to look. So now I'm going to have to come in after I remove the paper and debulk that corner. So if you make a boo-boo like I did, don't panic. I just fixed it. Because you know what? No one's going to know that mistake is there. Well, except for you. And if it makes you crazy like it makes me crazy sometimes, well then, I'm sorry about that. But everybody makes mistakes and it's not a big deal. You can recover from it. All right. That is my butterfly wing. That's what it's supposed to look like, right? So it's supposed to be kind of rounded. So now we're going to start putting our pieces together. Right? We have a lower half of our wing for our butterfly. We have our upper wing for our butterfly, and he's supposed to land right there, right? So that upper piece is supposed to meet right there, and that lower piece is supposed to meet right there. But remember what I did to it, and I just went straight down, and that's okay, because that's how I wanted mine. And so this one goes up here, and this one goes right here. And so we just keep putting all of the pieces together. So we have a lower tail. This is A. We have an upper tail. And so this is one half of my butterfly now. And so to put my butterfly together, I'm going to follow this, and I'm going to sew this lower section to this lower section, right? So if I flip it, you can see that this is D and B. This is this side and they're going to end up on the opposite side. Yes, a casserole dish with your mobile phone works, but a lamp, a light, anything that you need. And don't panic if you get it wrong the first time. Try just doing it with just junky scrap. You know how we all have a bin of like ugly fabric, like why did I buy that fabric kind of fabric? You can make this with that kind of ugly fabric and just keep it moving. All right, so now I need section F, which is the other section that goes on the opposite side, right? Because this is gonna end up on this side, and so that's the only part I'm missing now. And I think I like how this butterfly is turning out. Warts and all, I don't care if mine has little warts. It's a warty little block. The butterfly has a broken wing. Yes, Linda, it does because I skipped over one of my steps and you know what? I just went with it. I just winged it. Haha, uh -huh, butterfly joke, right? I just winged it. There we go. And I'm not going to be sad about it. It is what it is. There are more important things in life than stressing over my butterfly's itty bitty little wing. And so I'm going to sew these two pieces together. And I'm going to come from here all the way through the seam allowance. Yes, laptop screens are great. Cell phones are great. A plastic shoe box with, a, with your cell phone in it is great. You can even use a ruler on top of a plastic bin. So if you have other tips to share, please do. This is what this channel is for. Share away, friends. Share all those tips.
All right. We're getting close, getting close. All right, let me sew the other half together. I need to fix my bobbin. You're just gonna line those up like I did the lower half to where your lines are lined up. Don't skip any steps like me. And then, like I said, use a leader and an ender. That saves you time and aggravation. All right. Bloop. You leave the paper in through every step, every single step. So there's not a single step that I remove paper until the very, very, very end, but I do score all of my paper. All right. See how stiff that is? This is where paper scoring is handy. It helps it lay nice and flat. Just score it on both sides. And it helps those seams to just lay naturally the way they would. And it helps to remove this paper a lot easier. So I just score it on both sides and now my seams are flexible so that I can do what I need to do. There we go. Like I said, this one had a little tiny space that went this way. You see that one, D3, to match the wing like I did on my test block. But sometimes when you're on live TV, see how that one is there, D3, and it, it matches right there. On this one, I just kept it straight because I didn't have enough coffee today, I don't think. But that's okay. Because I'm gonna make the other half the same and then I'm gonna go with it. So now once I have these, right? And I have this half of my butterfly. This is the top half right here. So I'm gonna have this entire half of a butterfly and I'm gonna join this side to this side. And the reason I'm doing this is joining this side to this side is because it reduces, like I said, the number of seams in the middle so you won't have to uh, try to deal with six seams in one spot. And so I'm going to pin through that corner and line it up with the other corner on the other side. Just like that. and you just make sure that it's straight. So I just use my pin to make sure that it's perfectly straight. And then I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna come from the other side. I'm gonna pin somewhere in the middle right here. I'm gonna go through to the other side and I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna rotate and I'm gonna make sure that that is nice and straight. And so I'm gonna just make sure that it's good and flat Right, because what I don't want is, is to feel a warp. It should lay flat. When I'm doing this, it should be laying perfectly flat. So make sure that it does. If you see that it's flat like this, when you're joining your halves, then you're doing a good job. It should not be warpy. And that should be blunted. And I'm gonna sew from this side all the way down to the other side to do half of a butterfly. I'm going to lay this one open and then the other one is going to have them to the inside and that will allow my seams to nest when I put these things together. So that's another thing you have to remember is how to nest your seams like you do traditional sewing. Remove your pins, don't tear up your machine. Lay those seams flat. 
as you come into that intersection. And so till you get there. So to the very end, all the way through. And now I have a half of a butterfly. Now my butterfly is a little bit different than in the template because in the template it has a little extra piece, but I left mine off and I'm okay with it. As long as this piece matches right there, I'm good. And so that piece does match. And so when I sew this other half on, it looks deformed, but when I sew this other half on like this, and I sew this one on there, and I sew this top piece in there, then all of these will match and it will be just fine. And so this one will get sewn to this side. And then I need to finish this piece to sew the entire thing. But you guys get an idea of how to do this, right? Yeah, use your scraps first, people. If you've never done this before, just use your scraps. So this was my scrap piece, right? And I worked out all of the kinks and bugs on this. If you notice, I had a lot of, I had to do a lot of writing on it, right? And so use colored pencils. If you've never done this before, color all of your bits. If you have, if you do not have a little tracing wheel, you can score your bits with the back of your seam ripper. And how I do it is simply take this right here, like where this seam is, and I just take the back of my seam ripper and I gently score like this. Look, go down the paper just like this and do little dots. And then it enables you to fold it back. So you don't have to have a little tracing wheel. If you have one, it's great. But if you don't, you can use the, just the back of your seam ripper and just go like this, look. And just perforate down the line like this, just perf it. Just like that. Just make little, little lines, just like, every, like little stick marks, like every so often, boop, 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 boop. Like little, little polka dots all the way down if you do not have a, uh, a tracing wheel. If you don't have a fancy iron, you can use a spoon. And you're gonna need lots of flathead pins and make sure that you have a pencil handy dandy and this is all that you need. And so now, in order to put this butterfly together, I'm gonna to build the other half and I'm gonna stick it on there and, and that's it. And so this butterfly, if this was two pieces, would just have piece one and piece two. And if you notice, these are going out, the next ones are going in, you just nest them just like you do a traditional block and your entire piece ends up being eight inches and it's super flat and super wonderful. So, all right, friends, this is it. This was a, a basic introduction to paper piecing. Don't do as I do. Make sure you follow the steps. Don't get in a rush. I was on live TV and I was thinking about basketball. But like I said, if you have any seams that feel bulky, once you um, get ready to remove this paper, you can um, simply just perforate it a little bit and you can pull it off. So if this paper gives you any trouble, you're just gonna stick your finger in there and you're just gonna peel it back and you can just pull all of this paper right off of there. And you don't have to worry about anything. So just pull it all off and you'll be able to pull all this paper right out of there. This is where my seam ripper helps. Just kind of trim it a little bit. I use my little wheel. My little wheel helps me to get that paper right off of there. So this is why I like it. Like I said, you end up with some really, I just use it that tool kind of to the side that helps me to break those up. And it comes right up just like that, look. I use the little wheel because it doesn't have sharp points. And I just kind of hold it and pull the paper back. Just like that. All right, friends, if you have enjoyed this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If there's other things that you wanna do, I think I'm gonna do some simple stars and some other stuff on my website for those who are new and feel kind of scared to do the butterfly, I will do um, some additional things you can do that are paper piece, maybe some flying geese or something simple for you to start with. I appreciate you taking the time to be with me um, this uh, Sunday afternoon. 
but I'm gonna finish my butterfly. I'm gonna take pictures of what I'm doing and I'm gonna put it right on the website so you can see what I've done. But my butterflies are gonna be done in sherbet colors so you can see what I'm doing. I'm using some 1930s scraps I had. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this lesson on paper piecing. Remember, this should be C1 and C2. It is correct on the temple. It's just kind of off on here. I appreciate you guys joining me. I will be uh, online at 8 p.m. this evening. So if you guys want to jump back on into the Jelly Roll Club meeting room, I will open a chat room if you guys want to ask me any questions or chat. And uh, like I said, I'm going to finish this up and I'm going to post pictures later. All right, friends, you guys have a great afternoon. Uh, root for your team. My brackets are busted, so there's nothing happening in my basketball world. So I guess it's sewing for me. All right, everybody, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. And I hope to see pictures of your table runners. Don't forget to post those. Bye, everybody. I'll talk to you guys later, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye.